In this video, I'm gonna walk you through how I do my digital collages. I'm gonna start off with a shoot I did with a model named Kaylee. These were just simple shots done outdoors with kind of directional lighting. I am working on a series of images that are kind of mechanized people, essentially. I wanted to create things that utilized the cool fashion-y poses that I get working with models, but I wanted to add in a little bit of hybrid technology to it. So to start off, I am using selections in Photoshop to remove all the details that I'm not going to use. And uh, I've already decided that what I'm gonna use with Kaylee is her hands, her legs, her face, but replace all the innards with uh, clockwork type of stuff. I'm using two photos taken from different poses because I feel like I could get a much more interesting composition if her legs are smaller and in one direction and if her hands and face are another. The selection tools I'm using essentially are the polygonal lasso tool and the quick selection tool. Quick selection is good for getting these large empty chunks like the sky. It will do a good job of capturing that and figuring out what's the large empty chunk versus the person. And for the close-up stuff, if it's a straight thing like a leg, I'll utilize polygonal lasso and if it's something a little more curvy, I'm more likely to use the magnetic lasso tool. The magnetic lasso can follow around her jaw. I also often just do a little polygonal lasso around the main object and then go in with a round eraser brush and erase out the chunks that I don't need. So this particular picture with her hand did not have both hands in it. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate a hand, move it around, flip it horizontally with a transformation. Then I'm gonna go ahead and find some machine parts. And in Google image search, a lot of times you get things that are from stock agencies. They're the ones that want to be the first in the Google image search because they want you to pay for the images. But you know, if you take the time, it's not too hard to find things that don't have any sort of of watermark on them are a large enough resolution that you can merge them with your works. So I got a couple different kinds of gears here. I'm going to find a wrench with a suitable resolution. I go ahead and make that as her arm. And in my Photoshop layers, and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use transformations in Photoshop to give it a little bit of perspective. Because her hands are really large and they're closer to the viewer, the intention is that she would have some sort of perspective to her arms too. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense if you just take a photo of something flat and drop it in, but it's supposed to have perspective. Now I'm gonna find a circuitry pattern because I feel like her legs and her shadow really blend in a way that might be confusing to a viewer. I want to have some separation of the two, and even though it doesn't make sense logically within the piece for her to have a shadow full of circuitry, I think design-wise, it absolutely does. Now, when I do digital collages, I still want to represent the person the best I can. If there's something that needs to be cloned out, skin a little bit softened, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. The final thing I'm doing is I'm making an adjustment layer that makes it a negative and I went ahead and saved that on top. The reason for that is I'm going to utilize my digital collage in a cyanotype piece and cyanotypes are created with a chemical that you coat on a paper but you also need a negative to place on top of this coated paper, place out in the sun and all of a sudden you have a blueprint of whatever image you had the negative of. I save that as a negative and then I'm making a couple extra versions of this just for my own sake. A lot of my own personal graphic design projects utilize this very contrasty red look. I feel like it's something that's really punchy and, and uh, visual and I would utilize that version for a zine. I'll go ahead and show you the results of my digital negative. Uh, I printed out this negative on a piece of paper at FedEx office, formerly known as Kinko's. I still call it Kinko's, even though I believe they stopped being known as Kinko's around 2006. Once I had that paper, I put it on what is known as contact paper. This is a sticky substance that you put in your cabinets to prevent the glassware from rotting on the wood. Rub the back off that with hot water. 
And there I have a negative to utilize in my final cyanotype print. And here is that cyanotype. This paper had graphics already printed on it, and I knew that going in. That's part of the reason why I made a digital composite of this young woman and machine parts. I wanted to have it feel like blueprints took influence from a film called Ex Machina. I always knew it was going to be printed as a cyanotype on this paper with mechanical blueprints already on it. And there you have it. That's how I do my digital collages.